I already know they'd come from the mouth of the north, south. Where's the east? Oh, east and north. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, ain't we glad to be back in church? Amen. Yeah. I'll tell you what. Give the Lord praise. God's been good to all of us today. and uh, I don't know. I guess really we all are to feel like God's blessed us more than anybody. When you feel that way personally, that means you're drawing a little closer to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I, I see I see the uh, the four of me goes back there. I, I, I'm sorry I didn't get to shake your hand. Back. Well, we'll just call it three because Troy don't want to fit in with that crowd. <laughs> If he did, he wouldn't be wearing them dark glasses. <laughs> we know who you are, son. You might well pull them off. Right. It's, it's good to be here. Uh, a lot of sickness to pray about. And the little one that Rosie told us about that uh, so I have the same thing as Sierra is uh, opening its eyes. And uh, uh, that's a great step. So if, let's give the Lord praise. Keep it Amen. And Joe, I, I think he might have moved just a tad quicker, faster than he was moving last week. Was he? Yeah, just a little. All right. All right. I want to. I know how fast he moves. If he if he makes on you mad and she gets angry, <laughs> yeah, he he be he be the fastest one legged man you ever seen in your life. <laughs> All right. Well, let's pray for our lost loved ones and uh, uh, the heat's been real bad. Uh, Seems like it's really sucking a lot out of me, but. Uh, we're just glad that God's blessed us and God's give us what he has and uh, uh, give us another opportunity to see the house of the Lord opened up. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, would you? And let's pray one for another. Pray God's blessings upon all things here today. Amen. Wayne, would you ask the blessing, please? Yeah, Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We don't have a name for us today. We thank you for this church. We thank you for your blessing. We just ask this in the Lord's sweet name. Amen. We all have to forgive me if I'm a little hoarse. Uh, I didn't know I was going to preach all that this morning. Uh, I might get back to that text one of these days, but I don't know. Uh, but uh, I just tried to obey the Lord. Wanda, Wanda just come to see if I was still alive. <laughs> but uh, uh, I just thank the Lord for all his blessings and uh I don't come down here or, or get on the radio uh, to try to gain somebody's uh, popularity. I, I, I'm, I'm too old for that. Uh, I just want to do God's will. I'm, I'm closer home than I've ever been. Amen. And I, I want to stand before the Lord and hear him say that I, at least I tried to do my best. Don't you? I feel like traveling on. Do y'all? Well, let's do a verse or two of that. The key of help, maybe. My heavenly home is Right and fair, I feel like traveling on. No pain, no death, and bigger than I feel like traveling on. Come on now, yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My
day, man. God's been so good to me. Thank you. Congregation, anybody got a song? We'll start with y'all. Oh, put your hand down, Adelaide. Oh. <laughs> Darcy was back her heart. Mama ain't gonna sing it. No, she wasn't even raising her hand. I'm just aggravating her. All right, Tammy, are you gonna sing? Huh? I don't have one. You want me to find you one? Anybody? All right, come on. Come on, young. Don't you love these volunteers? And I'm not talking about Tennessee, neither. <laughs> But it don't matter to me. I, I, I guess I, I get talked about a lot. I, I, I just ain't no sports guy, I reckon. I, if, if I'm interested, I'll watch it. If I ain't, I don't, you know, whatever. What you got? Uh, uh, Apple Pello? That's right. Either the Apple or y'all try to catch me. If I caught you, I wouldn't know what to feed you. What are you doing over here? He said young, and I thought somebody. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we got to get her stirred up. Now she, now she won't start that song over again because she's stirred up. I love the Lord this morning. Y'all just listen to words to this. The preacher got up, said, stand to your feet. We'll start with a prayer. If you have a need, let it be heard, saints, let it be known. We are all family, and you're not alone. That's when he saw her in the back of the church. Her silence and sadness cried out the hurt. The kind shepherd knew just what to say. I need to know before we pray. What about? Unspoken request. Does anybody have one here tonight? If you come with a burden, you can share a need in your life. Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you rest. Child, have no fear. Our God can hear an unspoken request. That's right. Well, the preacher whispered as she raised her hand, Sweet Holy Spirit, come by her and stand. When her tears started flowing, he had no doubt that in the throne room of heaven, her secret was out. An unspoken request. Does anybody have one here tonight? If you come with a burden, you can share a need in your life. Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you rest. Child, have no fear. Our God can hear an unspoken request. Hey, an unspoken request. Does anybody have one here tonight? If you come with a burden, you can share a need in your life. Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you rest. Child, have no fear. Our God can hear an unspoken request. Child, have no fear. Our God can hear an unspoken
Yeah. I just try to get the tune where we can play with her the next time. I like that song. Ain't you glad God does hear unspoken requests? Amen. 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 Holding up David here. That's all right. I just want to say I love the Lord this morning, and it's good to be back in his house, and good to see each and every one of you here this morning. And uh, Troy and Tammy, it's good to see y'all. Amazing. Good to Amen. see you. Amen. I had you on my mind this morning. Thank you about you. Amen. Uh, if, if Pat Ben Wayne said it, I'd say God still works with small things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I got a, I, I, I mentioned it last week, but uh, uh, this is a special day for me. Uh, two years ago today, I finished my cancer treatment, and y'all know, know about that, uh -huh. and uh, I've considered myself cancer free. Ever since then, I've had several tests going back, and now I am cancer free Bless for two Lord. years today. <laughs> He has hey, man. to do, and, and uh, I believe this is part of what he has me to do. Bless the Lord. I do too. There's a light in the window.
Says, shout as he 
is what you would be in hope. Oh, it's not the seer, say grand. Shall the deeper father deliver us will come? I'm going to be with my Jesus. I'm going to be with my Savior. Amen. Now, I'm looking forward to spending eternity with him. You say, where are you going to be at in heaven? I don't know. He says he's prepared for me a mansion. But bless God, if he'd make me a doormat in the kingdom of heaven, I'd rather be that <laughs> than a, a mighty big man in the kingdom of heaven. Right? Uh, I'm glad that I've made my preparation for a better place. Amen. This world is not my home, as that song said. I'm only passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Amen. They are held in Jesus' keeping. There ain't nothing that man can do. Praise his holy name. Amen. I'll, I'll do this one. I'm a little stopped up this morning, but Aline asked me to do it last week, so <clears throat> gee. We'll give it a shot.
It is ever even one of the pleasures I know. Tell me, Lord, what did I ever do that was worth love from you? Oh, the kindness you show. halfway get to 10 right, but uh, uh, I got a lot of songs that ain't got the right words in it, uh, but uh, I never have let that bother me, I just go right on like, uh, like, like we thought they were right anyway, T E flat maybe. We need some old fashioned preacher, teachers all about the word. Need some old fashioned Christian who pray all night long. We need some good God to sing in. Help us go another mile. Then the church will try our Make it home, my choir. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. It'll be worth it after all, child. It'll be worth it after all. After all of these hard days. Give me words that I crawl. If you're down in the valley, pray is all I can do. And if you are struggling, let me help you make it through. But if you're up on the mountain and you see me start to fall, call my name out to Jesus. Make it home, my boy. Give me word that I draw, child. Give me word that I draw. After all of these trials, we'll hear Jesus call. Give me word that I draw, child. Give me word that I draw. After all of these hard days, he worked it after all. After all of these hard days, he worked it. 
it after all. After all, Amen. let's do this in the key of B. Amen. We'll slow it down just a tad. I hope this song will be a blessing to all of you out there. I hope you can envision what this is talking about. If you can, if I can envision it while I'm singing, I'm in the right spirit. And if you can envision it, then you are too. Amen. But if it's just words that's running off the paper, it doesn't mean anything to nobody. Right? right. I'll listen to what God has said. Who's that man with a cross on his shoulder? And it now beneath the head. Is there no one? To relieve him of his burden. You help me walk that long dusty road. Behold the Lamb of God, pretty Gilbert, to take the sins of this whole world all away. Our Savior today Is he tired? Is he bleeding? Is he crying? Struggling now To climb Calvary's key They are mocking His name Casting rocks now the earth is darker, the leaves now stand still. Behold the Lamb of God, really given, to take the sins of this old world all away. They're crucifying our Savior today. Nailing his precious body to a cross. Now. Is that a soldier I see piercing his side? I hear him asking, Father, please, please forgive me. This is God's Son, the Word crucified. Behold the Lamb of God, freely given, to take the sins of this old world all away. Our Savior today. Behold the Lamb of God, sent from heaven. They're crucifying our Savior today. Amen. God bless today. Let us pray with Mary God. Lord, we ask you to move and touch and help God in the need here this morning. Father, we pray that our hearts might just lift up your name above all other names. And that we might realize that you have told us to cast our cares upon you. You have told us to pray and believe, God, that we might receive that which we ask. And Father, I pray today that she might feel your touch and your love. And God, your comfort and your peace that she needs here today. God, answer her prayer. See her tears, and I know you are. And bless her, God, as only you can do. In Jesus' precious name, God. Amen. Amen.
Lord bless her and touch her today. Amen. Amen. God saw me and he knew about my weakness. He knew that I was seeking deep in the sea. He saw the tears, he heard the prayer.
We'll start in verse 28. We're going to read very familiar scripture. We'll read down through verse 30. Jesus is speaking. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today, God, and ask you to bless. Thank you, Father, for the sweetness that we feel in our hearts here today of your presence. Thank you for these whose heart has brought their burdens unto you that have cried out to you, God. And Lord, I know, Father, that you're listening. I believe your ears attend to the prayers that are made in your house when people are, God, uh, f they pray with a fervent spirit and feel what they're asking you for in the depths of their being. And God, I know today that there's many burdens. I know there's troubles. I know there's heartaches. I know there's things going on and, and families that are lost and all these things today. And God, we, we have hope in you. Lord, we don't have hope in no one else. There's no one can help us, God, but you. And Lord, if we give up on you, then we just don't have any hope at all. And Lord, we ask you to help us and strengthen us Lord, let the words that you allow me to speak to, to reach out and touch every heart under the sound of my voice. And God, if there's one lost, wherever they might be, that the Spirit might knock at their heart door and they might open and ask you to come in. If there's one that's turned their back on you, grown cold and indifferent, they, they just don't have that close relationship that they used to have. We ask today might be the day that they'll be reconciled to you. And God, be drawn closer and closer to you today. Bless our faith, Father, today in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I have, I have talked about this thought before, but I've not brought this message. You say, what do you mean? I, I, a friend of mine, God has brought me to these scriptures and give me these words that I have to bring to you today, but it's it's a thought you've probably heard. It's an old saying. It's you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. There's a lot to that old saying. Amen. You know, most everybody here has heard it. Even the younger probably have heard it, and at some time or another, and we probably even said it ourselves at one time or another. You know, I've always been amazed at how people came up with these descriptive sayings to, to make a point. And that's what they're doing. A friend of mine, to make a point about people's ways and their characteristics today. This saying actually speaks about rebellion. It talks about stubbornness. It talks about self-will. It talks about rejection. There's so much territory of life that's covered in this simple little phrase that you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. Amen. You know, life has taught us more times than one of the proof of this, not only among others, but even in our own lives, hasn't it? Now, I, I believe today, and I'm sure that we would admit it, that we can remember times when we acted or we rebelled against our friends, we rebelled against our loved ones or a stranger, or even God, in the same way that, you, that a horse does when you lead it to a water and it has no desire to drink. And we're living in a time when there's so many people that just don't have any desire of worship, don't have any desire of praise, don't have any desire of a close relationship with God. They're satisfied being distant from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. Social distance works in our society, but it has no place between you and God. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. Friend of mine, listen. If you're afraid you're going to catch coronavirus, if you get too close to God, uh, you just lied to yourself. Amen. You just don't want to get close to God if you feel that Amen. way today. Amen. Amen. Let me say a few things about this today. Amen. Friend of mine, uh, if you've never experienced this, and there are a lot of people that happen, 
Then uh, this old saying doesn't register in such a positive way, does it? But for all of us, and I hope there's more than just me here, that have experienced this very thought or this very thing, then we don't need it broken down too much to understand it, do we? Amen. You know, as a child, and I've told you, friend of mine, I, I started out taking on the job of plowing, and we'd have to bring those mules in for a rest and feed them, and, and then we'd have to lead them to the pond for water. We didn't dare turn them loose. Why? Because you couldn't catch them. You see, even a mule had enough sense to want to stay away from hard work. There's a lot of mulish people in our world today, ain't they? Amen. Have you heard the old saying that a uh, friend of mine, work was made for a mule and he backed up to it? Amen. Have you ever heard that? Amen. I've also heard that about people that's drawing a paycheck that they had to back up and get it because they hadn't done anything to earn it, you know? But after all this, time we took them to the pond, there's been times when they just stand there and look at me. Amen. And you know, I'm I'm about this tall and, and the mule's up here and, and, and I'd had to jump up and hit it between the eyes, but oh God, how I felt like it. <laughs> huh? Just stand there and look at you. You couldn't coach them in. You couldn't pull them in. And after a while, you just got tired and you carry them back to the barn. Proof to a friend of mine to the effect that you can lead a horse or a mule to water, but you cannot make it drink today. There's nothing I could have done as a, as a child to make that animal drink if it didn't want to drink. There's absolutely nothing I can do as a preacher to make any of you here today drink from God's water of life, to be blessed of God. There's not one thing I can do. I can lead you through the scripture. I, I can uh, I try to uh, give you instruction on, on what you need, but uh, when it comes right down to it, the choice is up to you. Amen. Amen. Up to you today. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever tried to lead anything that refused to, to lead any of you? It ain't so bad if you got a cat on the end of the line. Come on, you stupid turn. <laughs> or a little bitty dog. It's about please, 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 nothing. Come on. The animal people's gonna come and get me. <laughs> but it ain't quite the same. If you got a big dog or a cow or a horse or a hog on the end of that rope, is it? It ain't the same. Why? It's a bigger problem because the greater the resistance, the harder it becomes to lead. In the house of God today, the greater the resistance in your heart, the harder you become to lead to the place you need to be with God. To find what you need to bring spiritual fullness into your life. Amen. Sometimes we're like that horse on the end of that rope. We don't want to lead. Don't want to lead. We had a check one time. I had to tie it out every day. On the end of a rope. And I couldn't put it in a pasture with a mule. I don't know. They're just talking about a mule. Most of them wants to run cows. Huh? And I'd have to water it. I got tired of leading that calf. So I learned that calf G and Hall. I did. And I got behind that calf and I, I G and the G and the Hall and Hall. And boy, I was fond of that calf. And, and one day my calf got gone. I found it. It was in the freezer. <laughs> What'd you do? Well, I just eat on the G side, I eat on the hall side, and, and I had a good time, I reckon. <laughs> Amen. The <But> resistance. <laughs> you said that didn't happen. Oh, yes, it did. Amen. When I was growing up, you could pet them all you want, but you, might, you was going to eat them when they got big enough. Right? 
Amen. They wasn't no such things as pets that you kept at my house. Amen. That's why we didn't have none of them little pot belly pigs. If you can't eat them, we ain't gonna feed them. Right? Amen. Amen. Pets. We didn't have it. A dog that a friend of mine that wouldn't bark and let you know somebody was coming up or tree a squirrel or run a rabbit or do something. We didn't. He didn't hang around my house long. Amen. Hey, when, when there's 10 kids, uh, you, ain't got, you ain't got no time to worry about feeding another mouth, <laughs> you know. Resistance, though, is what I'm talking about. Rebellion. And there's so much of it everywhere you turn today. Amen. Hearts have become cold and, and hard and they declared their own way to be the right way. Have you ever seen a time when people are running headlong toward hell and think they're doing the right thing by doing it? Amen. Going straight to hell and, and, and seem like they're happy about it. Or they act happy when they when they do one of them selfies. Amen. You got something? Amen. I tell you, I don't like a selfie anyway, and I despise a selfie of them dummies that's out there causing trouble, don't you? Amen. Amen. I said this morning, they grinning like a mule eating saw bar, and I, I said, well, uh, you, you're saying I'm calling you a mule. I said, I ain't, because I wasn't disgracing no mule and calling you one of them. Uh -huh. People are running their own way. But they think they're right. Right. God help us. We're living in the world. And, and I'm not necessarily holding, blaming everything on the people. Uh, as I said, people, they ain't had much of an example. Amen. Children ain't had much of an example. Amen. Parents just took their children and put them in the house and let the TV educate them. Amen. There used to be a time that uh, when you went around in these places, the kids was out playing ball and riding bicycles and playing marbles. Amen. Now then, they're they're doing this. Beep 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 beep. You're gonna get it. Now. Beep 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 beep. You know. Amen. And and they they can't work when they get old because they got corporal condom in their hands. <laughs> they're gonna be on the right arthritic hands before they reach thirty. It, it's bad. They hadn't had no example. The preachers in the last decade or so have quit preaching on sin. They become condoned to everything that's going on because they want to fill up their church. What good is a church full of people that are on the way to hell if you don't preach and let them know they need to change their lifestyle? Amen. Amen. We're living in some tragic times today. Listen, people have disobeyed the word of God. And they prefabricated a religion that's become accepting to anything. Amen. They'll accept anything today. Amen. Amen. They don't care that I'm short and fat. If I'll just get out there and hold her, yip, 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 they'll give me a mask to wear. <laughs> They prefabricated a religion. Yeah. A religion, friend of mine, is not necessarily something that's spiritual or biblical. Amen. A religion is something someone believes in to the extent that they practice that in their life. Huh? Are you listening to me? Their heart has become numb and their ears dull of hearing. Their eyes are spiritually blind. And it doesn't matter, friend of mine, no longer what the Word of God says. Nothing seems to touch their hearts anymore. Right. Nothing. Nothing today. Yeah. When people can stand and set an old woman on fire and life about it. Amen. Nothing touches them anymore. Amen. Are you listening to me? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Friend of mine, when someone can shoot an eight-year-old kid in the back and, and then run away and not have the conscience enough to even repent. Their heart is cold. We're living in a cold world. Amen. If you think today that people are going to respect you, you better be careful who you put your trust in. 
there's only one person that will never turn his back on you, and that's God. Amen. We've turned our back on him, but God's never turned his back on us. The Holy Spirit is pleading with hearts to come. And, but there's numerous reasons why we need to come to God. And God welcomes them so. But everybody's got an excuse why they don't. Amen. They are self-justified. Well, it be right or wrong. God's saying, come. 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 You know why people don't come to God? They are enjoying their life of sin. There is joy and sin for a season. But oh, wait till judgment comes. Right? Wait till judgment comes. Somebody said, why ain't God already judged? Well, how many do you know that your loved ones that would be in hell today if the Lord had come this morning? Amen. They wouldn't have no hope, would they? Somebody said, oh, if they endure to the end... Amen. Hey, if they can't serve God now, what are they going to do when it really gets bad? Amen. The Bible says in this world you shall have tribulation. He's not talking about great tribulation. In this world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. But let me tell you something. The difference between tribulation and great tribulation is a great span of heartache and sorrow and pain and suffering and judgment and wrath upon this world. Amen. Today. Amen. I don't believe they'll even make it through the four horsemen. Amen. It's going to get tough, folks. You know what our hope is? In the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The coming of the Lord. But you can preach that and nobody wants to believe it. Nobody wants to believe it today. Do you think people, if they really believed they was going to hell, would keep on doing what they're doing? If they really believed it? But see, they have no contact, have no feeling. They become numb because of their sin. Sin builds a wall between you and God. And, and no matter how loud God's knocking, people can't hear Him because sin has separated them Amen. from God today. They're just like this horse that you're leading to water. But you can't make them drink. You can't make them get right. You know what it's going to take for any person to change? They're going to have to see that they need to. Amen. Need to. Amen. Hey, hey, we're living in a time of uh, rebellion. Uh, young people, children, oh, nobody wants to be told what to be to do, do they? Nobody. We got so accustomed of having it our own way, we even try to do it with God. Whether we like it or not, God still tells us what we got to do. He tells us what we got to do to be in His will, to appease Him, and to inherit uh, the, uh, the, the rewards of God in heaven. There's things we got to do. Wow. Amen. You tell that child to take out the garbage and they don't, he'll just keep piling up until you finally take it out. Amen. Amen. You say, what do you need to do? I say you need a friend of mine to carry them in the room and give them a little board of education. Amen. Oh, preacher, you shouldn't say that. Well, let me tell you, friend of mine, the board of education has worked in my life many times. Amen. 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 There's a whole lot of difference between discipline and child abuse. They're just the world's so dumb they don't know it. You hear me? We're all so dumb they don't know it. I, I'm going to say this and I'm, getting, I'm running a rabbit. Oh, I'm running a rabbit. <laughs> I believe they ought to take it. These people that don't believe it in the right way, put them in a round room and put 50 kids of the most notorious, meanest kids in the world in that round room that they ain't even got a corner to get in and they ought to slide their food on their table and leave them there for a week and when they come out say, what do you think now? Amen. You know what? They changed their attitude, wouldn't they? Amen. Well, come back, rabbit. Let's get back here. Amen. Only God can offer his leadership. Or he can only offer it. Friend of mine, he invites you. But the rest is all up to you today. Did you know that? 
He'll walk with you. He'll give you the privilege to walk with him. But all of this has to be the willful choice on our part. You know, people are walking without God. God that's not God's will. God wants to walk with us. Oh, God can do his offer. We're carrying heavy burdens. We're carrying sorrows. We're, we're facing things by ourselves. We don't have to. God's bid us to come. Amen. But all God can do is ask. You're going to have to accept what God's got to give you here today. And what God has got to offer you here today. He said, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Friend of mine, when you're in this condition with heavy labor or heavy laden, then you need, friend of mine, you need God's comfort, you need God's peace, and, and you need God's rest, and he has offered it to you today. Oh, and all you got to do is come. Look, we walk out of the church, and we look like a bullfrog been sitting on the lily pads all night catching mosquitoes. We're so blown up and full of pride. And we won't even come and ask God for the help that you and I need today. And God's give you an invitation. It ain't like you've got to convince God of anything. God's give you an invitation to come. Amen. Well, I got some things I got to get worked out. Well, how's that going for you? You had them yesterday and the day before that and the month before that and maybe a year ago. And, and I've got to get things worked out. Boy, I, I tell you, it just tears me up to invite somebody to church. They say, well, i got some things i got to get worked out. The reason they got things they got to get worked out is because they don't know God. They've been away from God. They've run away from the church. If they don't get things fixed in their life, they're going to have to come to the one that knows how to fix them. Bless God here today. Amen. Are you with me? I've been invited some to church and they say, well, when I retire, where in the word of God does it promise that they're going to live that long? Amen. Huh? When I retire and I can slow down, your life is too busy for God. you got too much going on. Did you know that? We need God's peace today. He said, take his yoke upon you. What does that mean? That means, friend of mine, that he'll instruct you. If you're yoked with the Lord, he'll instruct you. But, friend of mine, that also, that there'll be discipline. Because his yoke is the straight and narrow way. There'll be discipline. If you're yoked with the Lord and you're pulling in the wrong way, God will discipline you and bring you back to the straight and the narrow. You see, God's not going to go your way. You're going to have to stay in God's way. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. I'm yoked with the Lord. If you have, if you are, you've got spiritual discipline going on in your life. Amen. I'm glad God loves me enough to discipline me. Amen. Uh, love is not just turning me loose and letting me run my own way, do my own thing. Love is keeping me in the straight and the narrow way of my life here today. Amen. You know, friend of mine, God's love and God's presence and God's yoke, it doesn't yield itself to the ways of the world. He, he said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, hey, you got to stay where God wants you. Amen. You say, well, uh, 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 the Bible says God said he would not put more on us than we can bear. But you quit reading. That wasn't the end of it. There ain't no period there if you look in your Bible. But he said he, by the same way that we are tempted, he would make a way of escape. What has happened to us, friend of mine, we have stuck our finger in our mouth like some sucking baby. I, I mean, and think that God is going to do it all for us. That's not what God said. God said he'd make a way of escape. But you've got to have enough faith and trust in God how to get off your behunka and look for the escape. God's got for you. Amen. Today. Amen. Well, I'm just going to sit here because God said he wouldn't put more on me than I would bear. You better read it all. You see, the devil wants you to quit before you find the solution of your problem. Are you hearing me today? I know I'm rambling, but God help me. 
Amen. You know what he's telling us when he said his yoke is easy and his burden is light? He said we can do it. Who can do it? I can do it. You can do it. Whosoever will can do it today. You see, God has a plan for us to succeed in this life. God, did, God didn't leave me here to be a failure. God's left me here to succeed in life. God called me, friend of mine, to fulfill a mission in my life. You say, well, God ain't called me. God has a work for everybody to do. If you don't know what it is, then pray till God shows you. And then become a diligent seeker of the work God has for you to do in your life. See, God did, friend, has got a purpose for every one of us here today. It's just whether or not we want to do it. Think about it. Even though God is reaching out, and he is, there are those that still rebel, reject God's offer. Some of them is our family and your family. Amen. I got family. No, they ain't right, but they, they, they just live like they don't care. Don't care. I reckon they think that, friend of mine, if somebody's standing by their bed, say, side and, and say a little prayer that they're going to make it into heaven, there ain't nobody can pray you into heaven. Amen. I don't care who's holding your hand when you take your life's breath. The choice is made before you die. Death will find you just like you are. And you'll be that way forever. Forever. You can lead that horse, and, and, and friend of mine, I know that, that that might be a bad scenario for some of you here today. You say, Well, I'm call, he's calling me a horse. I'm not calling you a horse. I'm using the horse as a symbol uh, to, to bring forth a scenario to show you that what rebellion, rejection, and all this can do in your life, how it keeps you, you become statues from the blessings of God because you resist God's call. Amen. Amen. To be led today and to be fed. In the 14th chapter of Luke, Jesus spoke of a certain man, a friend of mine, that made a great supper. And the Bible said that he, he bade many. It was customary to send out two invitations. The first one was sent out in verse 16, the second one was sent out in verse 17. You see, this invitation wasn't just dropped upon them. They had time to prepare themselves. They had time to back out prior to the second calling. But you know what they've done? Just like a lot of people are doing today, they played along. They played along, friend of mine, right up to the time that they were expected and then they wanted to be excused. It ain't that people don't know what they need to do. It ain't that people's heart has not been left. You see, the Holy Spirit of God uh, deals with your heart. He's only obligated once, but my God, there ain't many people that many would be saved if God just not one time. Amen. He has sent numerous invitations, but people are just playing along, trying to write it out. Suck all the gusco out of the world. They want their cake, as the old timers used to say, and eat it too. They're just not happy unless they're miserable. <laughs> Sin makes you miserable. Why does people run so hard, fight so hard for misery? Sin makes you miserable today. There's no joy in your heart until you know Jesus. Amen. There's no love in your heart till you know Jesus. The Bible said God is love. And you can quote that backwards and forwards. It means the same thing. That's because the devil don't ever quote that verse. It says God is love. Love is God. God is love. Love is God. The devil don't quote that verse because it means the same either way. But there's no love in your heart till you know Jesus. When you know Jesus, he transforms you. And he gives you a, a spirit of love. And we bear his characteristics today. Does that mean that I always love everybody? I said this morning, no, I don't. No, I don't. I have to fight a battle with these things, don't you? If you're here today and you tell me you love everybody and, and it don't matter how bad they are and how rich they are and what they're doing, I'm going to say you're lying to me. Amen. 
He lied. Oh, I, I love their soul, but I am not going to love their ways. Amen. Are you? I'm not going to be taunted and drawn into this situation. Where is it? Is it? Is it Virginia? Wherever they are, where uh, they are saying that uh, if the homosexuals want you to marry them or, or want you to fix them flowers or, or cake, that they're going to prosecute you the first time fifty thousand dollars in the neck. Amen. They just wants to get my cell ready. Amen. Amen. You say, "Well, you you'll have to go to jail." Well, I'm going to go standing on this book. And I remember reading about two people as in jail and they began to praise God and sing blessing unto the Lord. And along about midnight, God shook the foundations of the door and opened up, how the jail opened up the doors and there was a man got saved. Amen. Hey, we don't know what God wants us to do, do we? Compromise is not in this book. You hear me? It's not in this book today. Well, why don't you go ahead and do it? Well, why don't I just go ahead and cuss? Huh? Why don't I just go ahead and, and, and tell you how sorry and low down I think you are? Amen. Huh? Because it ain't right. That's right. I agree. And Amen. it's not the characteristics of someone that knows Jesus. Are you hearing me today? Amen. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, friend of mine, I ain't got no paper on the wall that told me I was qualified to preach. I got a calling in my heart, and that's all I've ever needed. Amen. You listen to me? Oh, I, I ain't got nothing against education, but education without Jesus is just spiritual stupidity. Huh? Are you listening to me? Amen. Amen. I'm not going to fill out no resume for no church. If God can't put me where he wants me, I'll just sit at the house till he shows me where to go. Are you listening to me? I'd make a good preacher for the squirrels. Because I've pastored some nuts in my lifetime. <laughs> And Wayne said, Amen. because he's sitting by his mother. All right. <laughs> Amen. I came up by Rosie today, and she, she kind of stuck that bony fist at me. And, and I told somebody up here, I said, she's about to lose them false teeth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'll say this before I finish. Old Rosie went to the doctor and you know they yeah, they always want to ask you age. Why do they want to ask you age? Hey, they can look at me until I'm old. <laughs> and, 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 and then Joe, they want to know, how's your appetite? Well, what do you think? <laughs> <coughs> how's your eating habits? Hey, hey, anybody ask you that? I, I, I don't think they got sense enough to doctor the rest of you. He said, Rosie, how old are you? She thought she was at the veterinarian. She just spit him out and said, count them and see where you sit. <laughs> anyway. anyway. She got so used to going to the, uh, to the veterinarian, that's where she carried Wayne every time he got sick. And when he got a little older and he said, Mama, I said, why did you always carry me to the veterinarian when I was sick? She said, son, he's the only one I know. Look a donkey in the mouth and tell what's wrong with him. <laughs> You would agree because you was the next patient. <laughs> I was waiting on that. <laughs> now that you loosened up a little, let's talk about the leadership that God has for every one of us here today. Let's talk about God wanting to lead you into good things. God wanting to bless you. God wanting to help you. Huh? And you're just a call away, an answering the call away from seeing these things happen in your life. 
Amen. But he can only lead you. The scenario of the horse that, that you couldn't make drink is, is true today. I tell you something else happened as a kid. We was always doing crazy stuff as a kid, you know. We pulled down a uh, if you had to have a persimmon tree, that's the only thing that worked good. We pull down a persimmon tree, take two of us to pull it down, one of them sit on it, and the other get around it and wrap it and say, Turn it loose! <laughs> and you went like this. <laughs> if you're lucky, if you wasn't, you went like that. <laughs> but somebody told us as a kid that you couldn't take a billy goat by the horns and, and make his nose touch his belly. We tried. You can't. You can't. Why? Well, the more you put their head, the more their nose, uh, or make it touch the ground, is what they said. But the more you put their head, the more his nose goes under. He touches belly, but won't touch his ground. Uh, the ground. You ought to see me and Gary wrestle that billy goat, one on the back, one on the head, trying to make it touch his nose to the ground. <laughs> and we thought it was a goat's fault. We called it all kinds of names. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> You just can't change the nature of some things. And it just go further and further and further under. Boy, you know that was a good old goat. If it hadn't been, he'd have butted the devil out of us. <laughs> Amen. You see, sometimes we act like that goat. The more that God tries to do for us, the more resistant we become and back away from God. You know, animals will teach you some things if you'll let them. They say a chicken ain't got no sense. But a friend of mine, if you've got chickens and you feed them every day, when they see your car coming down the driveway, they'll run to the door there and go to cackling for you. Huh? Cackling. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad God made chickens where they got any sense or no sense at all because I like the eggs and the legs ain't bad either. <laughs> Amen. Nature can teach you things. Let me say that. You know, we sometimes when we're sitting out on the porch, there's, there's a, it's a mockingbird's what it is. There's a lot of them. And boy, he'll just, he'll just whistle all kinds of songs. Now, Joanne said, I like that one the best. I, I don't know if she thought it was a different bird. It was the same bird, but he is just changing his song. Ain't the mockingbird what they say, a bird of a thousand songs? They just keep on and on and on. Sometimes you sit on there and you try to imitate them. They, they know you're not real. <laughs> Sometimes I sit on the porch and try to call up a crow. I even got me one of them hickeys that you blow on. Because I despise a crow. I do. But I ain't got the first one. I sit out there and I go, you know, I blow that thing with all my heart. <laughs> you have duck crows. <laughs> no, I can duck out. I don't have no problem with that. But they never show. Never show. Why? Because the crow had more sense than I did. He knew I wasn't real. <laughs> or he had one sitting over yonder in a tree hollering, don't come, don't come. My wife is about the only one I know who's killed a crow lately with a car. <laughs> and she bragged that, said, you can't even shoot one and I kill that <laughs> one. I mean, that crow was sitting in the road and she hit the gas, I reckon. I don't know she thought she was hitting the uh, brakes. But you can hardly find a crow on the side of the road because even though they were eating, they got one up or hollering, car, 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 car. <laughs> you know, I learned to look for the spy. If you can get the spy, you got to change it to rest up. Nature teaches you things. Wouldn't it be great if we, if we just let our characteristic that God has put in us, let them surface and let us be what God wants us to be. See, God has put us way above all the animals. We're, we're supposed to be the brain. Man, some of us thought that they said rain and grabbed an umbrella coming down, but we're, we're supposed to be above. And, and birds don't ever 
whistle a, a sad song. It, you know, it'd be 90 degree weather and 95, and you're out there with the weed and you're hollering, God, I hope I get done with this quick metal bird hollering. <laughs> it's like he's hollering, I'm glad I ain't got no weed either. <laughs> they don't have no deep freezers. They don't have no cupboards. But every time it rains, do you know why they, uh, the, the earthworms come up when it comes to rain? God sends rain. They come up. They say they're coming up for air. But you know what? God's feeding all of his little birds. Amen. The richest person in the world couldn't feed all of the birds one day. But God does it day after day Amen. after day after day. Amen. And we thank God can't supply our need. God has made us higher than those. And we thank God can't work in our life. Amen. Amen. It's fun to watch a bird sitting on the tree and, and here comes a miller fly. And that thing, I've seen them just about do a somersault. Just gone. Said they're waiting on another. Wouldn't it be great if we was that patient with God and believe that if we wait on the Lord that God will make a way Somebody said, well, a bird ain't got nothing else to do. Hogwash, he can fly to another tree. But he sat there so patient. About that time, he'll fly up and grab something. Because he has got a characteristic inside of him believing that something's going to come. Something's going to happen. Boy, if we could just draw that close to God today, wonder what God would do with us. If we just use what God has given us to the fullest of our ability for God's glory, what would God accomplish through us here today? Boy, I've preached three messages and ain't, still ain't on the right one. Or the, I'm on the right one, just not the one I started. <laughs> Amen. But it don't matter. That's just the starting line. Wherever I finish is where God puts me. It, that don't really matter. Amen. Somebody said, well, what do you do with all them? I take it that God meant most of that for me. <laughs> Amen. Are you letting God work in your own life today? Are you? Are you? I mean, if it's more about you than it is God, it, you're not letting God work in your life. If everybody sees you before they see any godliness in your life, you're not where you are to be with God. They, you know, the love of God ought to be illuminating us. Our, our countenance ought to shine with the love of God and not our self-pride. Amen. Are you? Are you letting God? Y'all get a song. I'm going to have to hug The Lord said, Come unto me, all you that are laden and heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. Amen. Is there not anybody here that could use some? Is there not anybody here could use some peace? Could use some comfort? Is there not anybody here today that could, could use the fact of feeling the arms of God around you and pulling you just as close to him as, as he can? Is there anybody here today that couldn't use a little help in this battle that you're fighting, in this trouble that has come your way. God built things in us. He gave us a soul, and that soul is eternal, and it's made in the image of God, and that soul has a desire to have a relationship with its creator. Are we hindering that? What's God saying to you today? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. Take my yoke, he said. Ain't you tired of doing things your way? Wouldn't you just love to come to terms with God and do things God's way for a little while? Now you head if you would, please. Y'all go ahead and sing and play or whatever. I don't know your heart today. I, and I'm just trying to follow the, what God wants me to do today. And, and, and I don't know if you're listening. Are you listening from your heart? You can come. There's room for you to social distance. something 
it in you today? Are, are you using what God's given you? I'm asking you, if you feel like you need to pray for some reason or another, that you would believe God and trust God enough to get up and do it. Get up and do it. God said, come. Come. His arm is outstretched. The Spirit is knocking at your heart's door. Come. You're fighting all by yourself if you want to. Or you can tag in God. What do you want to do? Amen. If you're here today and you say, David, I've, I, I've got some trouble in my life and some things that I'm wrestling with. I need God's help. Would you pray for me? Don't nobody look. Amen. Would you pray for me? Just lift your hand up. Amen. 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 I want to pray for you right now. I ask you to be obedient to God's call. Would you? Father, thank you, dear Lord, for being here today. Thank you, Lord, for, for using someone like me. I, I know, God, I'm, I'm awful foolish. And, and I know I'm the least in the kingdom, but I'm so glad to be there. But I just want the folks to know that I love them. That I'm concerned. And that I will pray. And believe, God, that you're going to answer the prayer. And oh God, there's no one here today more needed than me. And oh Lord, we bring these things to you with a humble spirit, with a trusting heart. You see, God, I realize I can't. There's just so much I can't. I, I can't do, I can't accomplish. But there's nothing impossible with you. And if we walk together hand in hand, there'll be nothing impossible for us. May our life be touched here today. May the Spirit of God move freely. If there's one here today that's resisting your call, rebellious, oh God, speak to them again. Speak to them that somewhere they might pray and call upon your name and find what they need. I pray for our families and the laws wherever they are today. God, that you might knock upon their heart's door, bring to their mind and their heart a need of being saved. Oh, let us hear today of some precious soul getting right. Touch these that have come to pray. Others that are praying in their seat, God. There's a wonderful, wonderful, sweet spirit. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. God, we just give you praise and glory for that. And honor you in all things today. In Jesus' name, amen.
because of that old count meeting invitation song and give their heart to the Lord. I, 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 God laid that song, whoever wrote it, on their heart and, and has used it in a manifold way. I wonder how many, how many souls that has heard the words of that song as God was given an invitation and responded that God wanted them just like they are. Amen. Amen. Ain't that something? God wants you just like you are. You glad you come? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord praise for being here. Well, the Lord will we'll be back at 6 o'clock. And we do praise the Lord for his blessings and God's goodness. Been getting a lot of response on the, on the uh, Facebook thing. And uh, uh, the radio's program this morning got a lot of response so far on that. And uh, I do appreciate God. I appreciate you sharing us and, uh, uh, by hitting that little button. And we don't know who's it going out to. We don't know who God's going to speak to. We don't know who might get saved. All we know to do is do what God wants us to do and put it in God's hands and it'll be all right from there, right? Remember the sick that can't come. Remember, pray that things would get better. We realize that numbers are, are going up, but I also uh, I found out and heard that, uh, you know, these tests are not accurate and uh, uh, there's people that's gone to one place and positive, another place negative, and, and, and they're, they're just not accurate. And uh, I hate to say that, but uh, I think some we're being duped along the way I think people I don't care what you go to the doctor for here if they can pass it off as uh, a coronavirus they, they're going to call tell you you got it where they can get more money from the government I'm sorry to say that but I believe that Amen. and uh, because uh, you know it, it's just it's just what's happening uh, one group of nurses I think uh, did some false tests and sent them in and just and put phony names on it just to, because they were leery of what was going on every one of them come back positive and, and it, they hadn't even done tests on nobody. It was a phony name. And they all come back positive. Ain't that something? Amen. Pray for those that do have this. And there's a lot to have, so don't quit praying. But, and I'm not telling you today to ignore the, anything. I'm just telling you there's a lot going on we don't understand. Right? All right. Any announcements? Anybody? Oh, uh, Frank Chuck, he's just about home with him. The grand baby, uh, the great grand baby, he's just six, seven months old. He's going to have to have a liver transplant. Oh, my goodness. This is Mary Lynn's husband, Chuck, right? Yeah. Amen. God, have pray for this. I haven't got to talk to uh, Phyllis Harness up in Indiana. And uh, I'm going to try to call her maybe tomorrow. But do pray for her. And she, I think she's on the hospice. But do pray the Lord to touch there. Uh, others today, we've got people that's asked for prayer. Uh, families that's asked for prayer. Unspoken prayer requests. Jeremiah, Jeremiah, they're going to take off his, part of his leg and uh, uh, needs our prayers. And they, uh, He was in the hospital when Mama was up there. And they took some of his toes off and took part of his foot off. And uh, now they're going to take his foot off and part of his leg. So uh, that family needs prayer today. All right. My niece is baby seven weeks old. Just had surgery on on her esophagus, and she came through it just fine. And, and you know the Lord answered prayer there. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise for that. Keep praying for this little one that Rosie's told us about, and uh, that God will continue to touch there. Anything else before we? Close out. Let the church pray for uh, Pastor Scott. <clears throat> She's uh, fighting the uh, pancreas cancer. She's pretty, She's pretty bad. bad. I, I'm glad you mentioned her because I, I let it slip my mind. And uh, they had sent a, a text and uh, someone had sent us a text and, and said that they wasn't giving her much time. And uh, uh, let's remember her. This is uh, Brother Leon Johnson. This is his sister. and. Pat is married to uh, uh, Harry Scott. And so she had a good day yesterday. She did? On a text from her granddaughter. Yeah, she had said that she eat yesterday and she was worried about everybody else instead of worried about herself. So You sent that text yes. to us, didn't you? Okay. So let's pray for them. Pray for her. Pray for the family. Amen. All right, anyone else? Pray for that. I was uh, 
told to ask for prayer for us. There were two children, and I don't know names or anything, but they were involved in the accident, and they're both doing pretty bad. Amen. It's local around here. Let's remember these. We don't have to know their names, but God knows who they are. Don't there, I believe it was a Mosley family too that uh, that was sent. Uh, there's a some a bad accident and they're from down here, but there's a bad accident up in Nashville, and the grandparents and them didn't even remember. They were trying to even remember the grandkids. They think they didn't even remember what happened. Hit them so hard. Mm -hmm. uh, but y'all remember them. A lot of happening, ain't it? Well, I'm gonna meet you on the porch.